there is nothing more sexy uh, than a mini PC. And the old challenge is to get something that small to deliver that much, which is not so difficult for some of us. Today, we are reviewing the AR900i from Mini Forums, an all-in-one supercharged ITX motherboard, which will change the way you look at mini PCs and what they can do. And fun fact for you, did you know that starfish have no brain? So Mini Forums is not that known of a company. But in the mini PC world, everyone has their eyes on them. They go on a mobile component market, stick it all on a PCB pie to serve you a slice of geek heaven. And there is always a, a, a mix of excitement and worry when I see a CPU soldered into something who will go in a PC. But overall, it's excitement. Now, starting with the obvious. The AR900i is small, ITX small, and all of our components are soldered on both sides of the same PCB, explaining its massive 10 layers, a high count which will avoid component signal bleeding and a longer lifespan. In short, and in terms of fundamentals, we are where we need to be. Now, our CPU slash chipset is where most of our money is. And this thing is powered by about the best mobile processor you'll ever find. It has nothing to envy to desktop CPUs. It shows off 24 cores, 32 threads, a maximum clock of 5.4 gigahertz, and 20 fully loaded PCIe 5.0 lanes. And it performs gorgeously as well. No matter what I threw at it, it scored right to the top and showed it could comfortably compete with the best premium processors today. Pure Intel yumminess. Chipset-wise, our i9 is supported by an HM770, the mobile version of the B760 chipset, which brings all the lower grade PCIe lanes, peripherals, and can fully run at a low 3.7 watts, allowing a rather small backplate to keep it cool without any issue. VRM-wise, well, I did spend some time researching it because there is not much documentation about it. We do have about 475 amps organized in a 6 plus 1 plus 1 direct phases configuration, 354 of which is CPU centric. Absolutely adequate um, to push the i9HX to its natural limits and moderately overclock it because yes, the thing can be toyed with. And uh, knowing that we're dealing with a CPU which can peak at 160 watt worth of heat and powered by 60 amps power stages placed all around it, well, we are going to need something massive to keep all that heat hit at bay. And so here comes the air cooler monoblock. And the way it works is simple yet efficient. Our CPU plate transfer hits directly into four 8mm diameter copper pipes, which spreads it throughout dozens of Finari blades. Big kudos to the Finari design, by the way. It's annoying, it's expensive to make, but it produces so much reditting area on its own and passively it is said to dissipate up to 100 watt worth of heat. I don't doubt that, but since our CPU can comfortably peak above 160 watts worth of heat, I would not advise you to try it. It's a great monoblock, but you will need to complement it with a fan placed on top uh, to make sure that it stays as cool as it can be all the time. I do also want to note the presence of a thermopadded double contact design here to provide a direct heat relief on both power stages and chokes, something that mini forums learn from uh, our big desktop motherboard design also that I've seen on other uh, mini pieces this year and I'm very happy to see bleeding all around the industry. Kudos. I think. Now, after an hour of torturous stress test, the block stayed well below the 40 degrees Celsius at all time, and the CPU itself never went beyond 68. In short, equipped with a fan, the cooling apparatus ejects far more heat than the CPU and VRM can produce, meaning that you can run this thing day and night, uh, it'll never overheat, and you even have some room for some overclocking, which is pretty sweet and I'm grading uh, the VRM at a uh, B plus, which is very, very good, but the overcooling system at an A plus because this thing is just awesome. Memory wise, our 
AR 900i. So hard to say how AR 900i can support up to a massive 96 gigabyte of DDR5 RAM, clockable up to a fast 5.6 gigahertz. This is not just another spec. Having that much DDR5 means that the AR900i can tear through any kind of production related tasks such as video editing, 3D rendering, and that is truly novel uh, on an ITX form factor. Staying in the memory and taking full advantage of the imposing amounts of PCIe lanes here, we have no less than four PCIe 4 enabled M.2 sticks, all of which can run concurrently and without PCIe bifurcations. How refreshing! up to 64 gigabit per second. That means that you can easily uh, read sticks together and get blazing fast read and write speeds. Again, wonderful for video editing, 3D rendering and all that stuff. Fast is nice, but fast is also hot. Precisely why at least two of those sticks receive a royal cooling treatment with a massive heat block, and I mean massive, so all topped by a silent fan. So if you're in the video editing or any other intensive read-write situation, this is where I would place those sticks. Now, export-wise, we got a future-proofed 16 PCIe 5.0 lane slot, ready to welcome the biggest brick you got to give her. That sentence is so wrong at so many levels. Now let us mention the fact that we don't have any metallic reinforcement, which I thought was a bummer at first since cards are rather massive, but not such a big issue since this board was obviously designed for an ITX build, which in every case uses a PCIe razor to send the GPU on the other side of the build, so no worries there. Cooling-wise, well, we have three PWM connectors, which is, well, about right. I would have preferred four, but three is fine. Uh, you should not need much more to operate a compact build anyways. And in my case, uh, I even went above and beyond and used a fan splitter to make sure I could custom water cooling this baby, because, yeah, I decided to custom water cool a mini PC. I, I, the way my brain works is a mystery to me. Now, back IO-wise, let's note the integrated plate, which is never given in this kind of products, so a good start. And starting from the left, we have our 7-channel ALC289 Realtek codec, budget-friendly and, and somewhat efficient. The only issue here is the absence of filtering capacitors we usually find on fully-sized boards. It will do the job for your day-to-day -day audio jobs, but for anything more subtle, such as recording or professional streaming, you might want to invest in an external uh, sound card. Next come our search protected 2.5 gigabit LAN plug, a dual band Wi-Fi 6E module, which can broadcast and receive in the much faster and cleaner 6 gigahertz radio spectrum. A couple of uh, legacy USB second generation plug, two 5 gigabit USB plug in addition of one present on the board as well. And here we got a couple of video outputs as well as an optional type C, which can be used as a third video output as well as a 10 gigabit data output. And finally, our clear CMOS button for a quick BIOS factory reset. Overall, a full board of connectivity and bandwidth yumminess. I got nothing bad here to say, happy all around. On the less good things, I want to mention we got zero RGB connectors, which kind of suck. Uh, we do have a plug fully traced on the board, but it doesn't work. Now, the other thing I'm not so happy about is uh, glazer lack of troubleshooting. We have nothing. Uh, apart from this little clear CMOS, no easy debugger, no QR code. I, I can't forgive the QR code, but I think the easy debugger would have been inexpensive to add. And, you know, there was room for it, uh, so to help us in um, the trouble, the day-to-day -day troubleshooting of the machine. Now, in conclusion, the AR900i will cost you anywhere between 500 to 600 bucks before taxes, and truth be told, the way I see it, this is gold for your money. The specs are, well, as high as it can be on an ITX motherboard, and most importantly, the tricky part was a you know, heating issue. When you put so many components on both sides on one PCB in such a small uh, uh, real estate, well, you do have some thermal issues. But here, here mini forums showed some real engineering muscle to make this thing work the way it does. I coupled mine with an RTX 3080 and this thing games 
better, works better than any build you'll have for 1500 bucks or less. And for a mini PC obsessed builder like me, well, there's simply nowhere else I want to see my money in. Thank you.